Responsive web design without media queries is really easy to do. I'm going to show you a couple of the techniques that I use for real businesses to make sure that their website scales doesn't matter what device people are using. If you haven't heard of me before, my name's Adrian and I do design and development videos. If you like this kind of content and want to see more like it, hit like and hit subscribe and let's just jump right into it. So what happens normally is people create entire website designs with media queries around the desktop, the laptop and the mobile device. But this doesn't have to be the case. We can create a single dynamic style for say a font size which uses the view width to update automatically. It doesn't matter what the device width is. Let's take a look at how we can do this. I'm gonna create a new design here with a H1 tag saying hello world. Right now, we'll make this H1 tag nice and big, maybe something like font size 100 pixels. Right now, if we take a look at this, then we can see it spreads across the page. But if we were to resize this page, it would break its line. It's not resizing at all. If we wanted to apply something that's more dynamic without a media query, we can use something like view width. So in this case, for example, we could do something like 50 view width or maybe even 25 view width in this case. And still that might be a little bit too much. So we'll do something like 15. Now if you take a look at this design and resize it, we'll see that it always takes up 15% of the view width of the page. And that way it always styles accordingly. There's other things we can do with this. You don't have to have it exactly 15 view width because when you go down to a very small size, it might be too small. So what you can do is a calculation. You might put calc, uh, put in something like 18 pixels plus maybe 10 view width. When you do this and resize, you make sure that the text is essentially always at least 18 pixels plus the view width that you're adding on, which is 10 view width in this case. A situation where this might be a little bit more useful is in normal P tags. For example, we might have a P tag here with a normal font size of 16, but we might want it to be a little bit bigger this case. If we were to only use a equivalent view width, that would be something like 2.5 view width. But if we apply that and resize, we might find that the text gets a little bit too small when you go down to a mobile device. So what you might want to do is add that calculation in here. And in this case, we might do something like 2 view width plus maybe 14 pixels. That way we can make sure that our text essentially has a minimum size that it has whenever it's a mobile device. So what about if we have boxes or elements or even images? Well, those can be responsive too. Let's create an article up here and we'll add some styling so you guys can see it. Let's do article height, maybe something like 400 pixels and the width can be 100%. And we'll do the background to gray. So here we've got a nice what you would expect to be a image. But when we resize this, we'll see that while the height stays the same, the width will get smaller and you might lose the aspect ratio for the image. So what do we do here? Well, essentially we can make the width and the height also responsive. We'll do 100 view width for the width and for the height, maybe we'll do something like 20 view width or maybe a little bit more such as 50. Now, if we take a look at this, the image will automatically resize with the page and that's very useful. Great, so we know the fundamentals of doing view widths and view heights. Now, what about Flexbox? Well, it's a way to have containers that span the entire size of that container. And we simply apply it by doing something called display flex. Let's put one here in our article and let's add a div. For our first div, we might add some styling so you guys can see it. We'll do a height of maybe 200 pixels, a width of maybe 400 pixels, a border, radius of maybe five pixels solid red and maybe a background of blue. So we've got our first div here. Now this style's okay, but if I add one more or even a third, we'll have an issue where now they're a little bit smaller. And if we've got some text in here, some titles and some images, they might not even fit in. So in this case, let's do a min width of 400. If we do that, we can see that the third box is getting pushed all the way outside of the container. And how can we fix this? Well, what we can do is run a command called flex wrap. When we run this with the command of wrap, then it essentially makes sure that if there's any containers that don't fit into this, then they'll be wrapped down a column. It's sort of like inline block, except in this case, we can see that the flex is utilizing as much space as it can. What we can also do is add a flex of one to this container. 
What this will do is make sure that it's utilizing as much room in the container as it possibly can. And when it can no longer do that, it then flows into another line. This is a great example of how you can use Flexbox to make sure that your containers are utilizing as much room as possible, but also responsive so that they break lines when they need to. Let's clean up this page a little bit. Let's make the background for this border a nice white color. And for the background color, we might do a nice dark gray. Finally, we might also change the height here. We can do something like 20 view width. And that way, when we resize this, it should automatically scale depending on the height and width. So right now, yep, it's resizing quite well. So that looks good. So whenever you do work like this, you want to make sure that you test and make sure that your responsive design is working on all screens. In this case, maybe the article or image might be too large when you scale up or down. So what we might have to do is add some caps to it. What we could do is add a max width or min width. In this case, we'll do a max height of 500 pixels. This makes sure that this element never gets larger than those amount of pixels. So it eventually stops when it gets to this size here. And that way you can keep it as a consistent looking design. Otherwise, you could do a min width as well. And that's something we've done in the divs. I hope this video gave you lots of ideas of how you can use responsive design without media queries. It's a very good combination of using view widths, view heights, and flex boxes. I might go into more detail about using flex boxes in the next video. And otherwise, I hope you like this content. If you do, please like it, please subscribe, and I'll see you next time.